to the Meeple Podcast. I'm Bill Price. And I'm Hollis Biggs. And we are the Meeple Podcast. And now uh, we are the podcast for beginning board gamers. Are anyone trying to get into the hobby and uh, and is struggling with everything that uh, that kind of goes into that? The the terminology, the I like Monopoly and nobody else does. <laughs> Why won't anybody <laughs> play Exploding Kittens with me? Um, we're going to get you past all that. So, um, we left off. What did we leave off with last? We week? left off on kind of a cliffhanger, Bill. Not going to lie. We did. We left on, off on the cliffhanger of what does what does the hobby mean? So we had talked about a couple of a couple of ways to get into the hobby of board games and, and a lot of just games in general. Um, but the thing we left off on was what is kind of your top level here? How does how does convention work? Because you've been to a number of board game conventions yes. over the years. So so tell us about what it's kind of like. Are, are they just there to sell you new board games or kind of what's the what's the situation? All right. Well, um, a board game convention uh, or I guess just a gaming convention uh, is just a, a large collection of um, hobbyists, of publishers of uh, retail places. You'll see some booths from uh, that are uh, some like online retailers. Um, you'll also see uh, independent designers. You'll see authors sometimes um, of like uh, role-playing games and uh, maybe like they write uh, Dungeons and Dragons adventures, uh, smaller booths. Um, but most likely, and, and you'll also see like people selling like uh, like dice, you know, like custom dice makers or um, uh, board game uh, bags or you know accessories, things like that. Um, but most common are the publishers. So a lot of board game publishers come to these uh, big conventions and and some to an extent the smaller ones as well, and. Um, they're kind of showing off, uh, they have demo tables, you know, they're showing off what their, uh, what their new games are, what, uh, sometimes what their, their old games are about trying to revitalize interest. You can almost always, uh, buy copies of the games. They, they keep large stocks there. A lot of, uh, a lot of companies, a lot of, especially small publishers, um, will actually do, uh, will sell, most of the games they're going to sell will be at conventions. Uh, they might do some through distribution or um, something like that, but but there are plenty of small publishers who really um, sell through their website or at conventions. And so that's kind of their way to make money. And there's almost like almost year round, there's conventions. There's uh, there's three big ones here in uh, in the United States. The biggest one is Gen Con, and that's in, in Indianapolis, not too far from, from us. And uh, it's about 70,000 people last year. Uh, it's enormous. It is the biggest one in, uh, in the United States. And then uh, another one is Origins, which is, I believe, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, weirdly, board games in the Midwest are like <laughs> a super thing. Pretty central. Um, yeah, and uh, I want to say that's in the realm of like twenty to thirty thousand people. Smaller, but still really big. Still um, a lot of people in general, though. Yeah, especially kind for of, a hobby that doesn't get as much exposure as board games. It's kind of a, I would consider it kind of like a social event almost for oh, for sure trying to meet other people that are in the hobby. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, there's also. Um, I just uh, got done working at a convention that is, uh, it's not open to the public. It's called GAMA, which is the Game Manufacturers Association of America. And um, it is primarily, um, it, I would call it probably the third largest, maybe. Um, and it is it is primarily um, manufacturers, uh, publishers, distributors. Uh, they don't really sell games there. It's more to uh, to get... Uh, retailers to come in and be like, oh, this looks like a fun game publisher. I'll take 30 of them at distribution prices, which are insanely low. Um, <laughs> it's usually about 50% of the MSRP is what you 
typically find in distribution, but we're getting way off topic here. Yeah. So if you're trying to get a game published, produced, you would go to something like that. Yes. In fact, if you are a publisher, if you are a designer, um, if you are um, a manufacturer, if you are a retailer who sells, uh, well, really anything, um, even if you are uh, a content creator like a like we are, or YouTube channel, um, you can join the Game Manufacturers Association. Very neat. So, yeah. So if, uh, if any of you out there ever thinking of uh, designing a game or creating a YouTube channel to talk about your last session of Monopoly, <laughs> then uh, then you too can be a Gamma member. Um, but kind of getting back to, uh, to conventions, uh, one of the coolest things about conventions is not just, uh, I sort of talked about the exhibit hall, mm-hmm. uh, which is where all the, the booths are. You know, it's like any standard convention, you go around, you, you know, talk to people, you buy games, you demo stuff, that kind of thing. Um, but that's only a very small part of a board game convention or really a game convention in general. And, uh, a lot of it is, um, there's free gaming. Um, so there's, there's large areas with tables and, um, games that, that are there that people can play. There are a ton of, um, of demo booths, uh, not even booths, demo tables that you can go out and you can kind of schedule like, Hey, on Thursday at 6 PM, you know, in this, this particular room, I'm going to play, you know, Wasteland Express or whatever. And, uh, everybody signs up and they get a ticket for it and, and, you know, you, you play it. Um, so there's, there's open gaming, there's, uh, there's pre-scheduled games. There are uh, other breakout rooms like um, like uh, upcoming games that publishers will be like, you know, new and exciting stuff. Like what's what just hit the market, what's about to hit the market, uh, new announcements. There's uh, like an independent designers room that you can get a table at and uh, and visit and kind of see what uh, what some of the the indie producers are doing. Um, this the cool thing about this hobby is that it's not just Hasbro and, you know, Milton Bradley and what have you. It's not all these big board gamers. We have big board game producers like, um, cool mini or not, which is Simon games or, um, fantasy flight, things like that. But we also have, uh, a ton of really, really small, like, I'm talking one man operations of a small card game that might sell 2000 copies. Um, and, but they're a publisher and they're, they've got a booth and they're selling their 2000 card game, 2000, you know, card games there. And, uh, and that may be all they ever sell. Uh, publishers go kind of in and out of business in this. Uh, it's unless you're moving a lot of quantity, this is not a very lucrative business to be in, especially given how many thousands of new board games are coming out now. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle. Um, but that's one of the cool things about Gen Con and these other conventions is that you can see uh, and meet those people and you can develop those those contacts and this, hey, you know, I really loved this this tiny little card game that you guys made and, you know, I want to be on your mailing list and wouldn't you know it? Next year they come out with an even better card game, and now you know about it. But you'd have never known about it otherwise, because it's not going to be all over YouTube. It's not going to be in Walmart. It's not going to be, you know, probably even at your local game shop. So it's it's a neat way to see to really get involved in the community and to meet people, um, and they're just they're so much fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like also again, like you said, a really great way to meet people that are also in the hobby. Would you consider it to be, I'm, I know this isn't a real word, but a less like gatekeepy environment than sometimes maybe like Reddit forums are or... Yes, very much so. Um, no shade to the Reddit forums. They're, it, it could be a little caustic at times, but, you know, we want to make sure everyone is right. has a has a nice introduction into the hobby if, if we can help it. Well, I'm not... I'm not uh... You know, this isn't a newsflash here, but people do tend to be nicer to your face <laughs> than they do behind a keyboard. Definitely fair. So, um, I it it definitely um, if you go to there's still some 
because there's all kinds of people that go to these conventions. You have like people who have been so immersed in this hobby for so many years that like just the thought of not playing some new heavy miniatures based war game, um, everything else is trash. And if you're like, Hey, I really like seven wonders architects and splendor. Somebody sure could look at you like you are beneath them. (laughs) Um, but I find that to be more and more rare. I think that, uh, I think that people are starting to understand, um, that the hobby is not in the same place it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was, there were 10, 15 years ago, there were a lot fewer games and the people in the industry were a lot more tight knit, I think. And they were more gatekeepy. They were more, Oh, you're not, you wouldn't understand. You're not, you're not one of us. Um, but then I think as, uh, as gaming, board gaming um, expanded and became more accessible and it became um, more noticeable and people started getting into the hobby, publishers started making money and more games started coming out and more people started, you know, showing interest in things and people started to, publishers started to look at the board game hobby less as this is our own little private hobby and more of, hey, I have a product that customers want. And so now instead of, oh, you're not good enough to play my game, it's, hey, how can I make this more accessible for you? How can I bring you in? How can I answer your questions? How can I show you how to play this? How can I, you know, help bring you, make you a loyal customer? Um, They've started understanding that board gaming is kind of like any other commodity it is it is a it, there's competition and it is a service and and it is a product and it is something that uh that they're trying to sell definitely and so i think you are seeing less of that all right um, and plus when you when you toss in so many new people um uh, their natural inclination is not to immediately become curmudgeons. You know, <laughs> that takes years and years <laughs> of isolation to do. So, um, see, so yeah, I think it, it is as welcoming now as it's ever been and is getting more so. But but some of us, like, we don't know, as the reason for this podcast, we don't know what we didn't know at the time. And so it's hard for me to not, to sometimes realize when I'm explaining something that, oh, when I tell you this is the same bidding mechanism as Furnace, you have no idea what I mean. Um, and I, that's, that's a me problem. That's not, that's not a you problem. That's all right. That's why I am here to learn right along with our listeners. So it's a great reason for this podcast. Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be great. And uh, in case anybody is, is, Wondering if you are listening to this and you are uh, a pretty experienced board gamer and you're listening to this going, well, I know what all this stuff is already. Um, maybe it's a be a good idea to recommend us to somebody that you uh, are thinking of trying to get into the hobby. Maybe somebody who uh, a spouse or a friend who you've sat down and played you know, a party game with. Maybe you, you brought just one or so clover uh, to their house one time and they're like, this was kind of fun. This might be a great way to get them comfortable with uh, with more of the terminology and kind of nudge them into the hobby rather than have uh, the way that I get people in the hobby, which is just badgering them until they <laughs> play with me. Uh, so, which I've done I- to everyone. Listen, we got to start somewhere and <laughs> maybe it's by force, but that's okay. Yes. So speaking of terminology here, Bill, what are some, what are some terms that I might need to know, not necessarily before I start playing board games, but like to determining what I, what I like, you know, what, what would you, how would you categorize some of the board games? Um, well, uh, we go over a couple different uh, sort of broad definitions. I know uh, as uh, more episodes come out, we're going to talk more and more about specific mechanisms um, that that board games share. Um, 
But I think some of the the basics we talked about uh, family games and family weight games. Um, we talked about uh, to an extent gateway games, mm-hmm. which are kind of a step above the family weight game. Um, grandma may not want to play uh, a a true uh, gateway game. Uh, it is a stepping stone into modern board game mechanisms. Um, but somebody who has, you know, somebody who likes exploding kittens or somebody who's played five crowns or somebody even who, you know, is a pinochle champion uh, <laughs> and just wondering kind of what else is out there. Uh, gateway game would be a good way to for them to kind of explore whether or not um, going beyond that is even something they want to do. Um, past that, uh, or even before that, kind of in a weird category on its own, you'll hear people talk about party games. Um, and I know right off the bat, it'd be, well, what's the difference between a party game and a family game? Like I play party games with my family, right? It's a great question. Right. So, um, typically party games kind of fall into their own category. They could be family weight as far as the rules go, um, Party games are usually very quick to explain, very easy to explain, uh, low rules overhead, but um, are typically designed for larger groups. Think five, six, seven, eight people. Um, I would take a party game. I have taken a party game when I know there's going to be six or seven of us uh, at the brewery, right? Sure. Um, And... Typically with uh, with regular family games or with gateway games or even with more complex games, you're typically looking at like two, three, four players. Some have played five, but it's rare to really get beyond that. There are some decent six-player games but uh, that wouldn't be considered party games, but um, traditionally, if you're going to go past about four people, you're usually in party game territory, especially if you're not playing with... Um, "Quote unquote uh, board gamers, like heavy or board gamers." Okay, so what are some good examples of a party game, just to give people an idea of what they're looking for when trying to purchase one, or maybe start with one? Sure. Um, well, one uh, one big example that I would imagine most people would know because uh, it's been in Target for a while and uh, Walmart and everywhere else uh, is Code Names. Oh, such a good one! Yes. I have played that one. I right, and there's um, like. 17 different versions there of it, it seems. There are a ton of different versions of it, yes. So, um, so Codenames is one. Um, even things like, uh, like Telestrations, uh, Taboo. Um, we're kind of getting into older party <laughs> games at this point. Um, a lot of trivia games. Uh, Trivial Pursuit is a oh, party game. That's a good one. Um, uh, some more modern ones uh, that we've played is So Clover. That is... Uh, one of my favorite games. It is wonderful. It is so good. Um, <laughs> and Just One is another example um, of one that is just an enormous amount of fun. And I'm sure we will do several episodes about kind of our, our favorite party games as we uh, as we get into those. But those are some, some kind of broader examples of what I would usually define as, as party games. I think, would you or what I would say about party games is that I think they're a really great way to like, if you're the first person in your group of fan, friends or your family to get into board game as board games as a hobby, I think these are great games to help get your, again, your friends and family involved in because they're easy. They're fun to play. Yes. Um, and again, just kind of a great introduction. Exactly. And because they're, most of them are family weight type games. Um, Grandma will often play a uh, a party game. Uh, so if you have larger family get-togethers, it's not just mom and dad and, you know, a kid and grandma. Um, maybe it's mom and dad and aunt and uncle and <laughs> two kids and grandma and grandpa, and they're all together, and what do you want to play? It's, it's the whole reunion. Exactly, exactly. So, um... Yeah, that's... So that's, that's party games. Um... Past, past gateway games, like, what are you gatewaying into is probably a good question. Um, and I think that is a good place to stop because I think that is a good topic for next time is what 
lies beyond the gate in a gateway game. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that next step? What what are we gatewaying into? Um, because I, I think a lot of people may not really understand like what else is after Ticket to Ride or Catan. You know? Yeah, we've kind of hit my so. the end of my realm of, of knowledge of board games. But again, that's kind of why I'm here. Yeah. Here to ask a lot of those questions that you guys as listeners might have as well. Exactly. And we're happy to have you. I'm happy to have you. And we're happy to have you guys. So <laughs> um, hopefully you'll join us next time. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what lies beyond the gateway. Um, in the meantime, how can people get a hold of us? They can get a hold of us a couple of different ways. You can always subscribe to um, our website at themeeplepodcast.com. You can reach us on almost every social media at The Meeple Podcast. Mm -hmm. And then you can also email us at TheMeeplePodcast at gmail.com. Those are probably going to be the best way uh, to reach us. We'd love to hear from you. Instagram, email, what have you. Uh, We're only here because you're listening. (laughs) Uh, At least we assume you're listening. (laughs) So, all right. Well, we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.